Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 605. Can food and lifestyle really impact your testosterone level? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to answer some questions um, in a more complete fashion than I have the opportunity to answer in the office because of time constraints. And the biggest question is, what can I do to increase my testosterone level without taking testosterone? So there are some certain types of patients that this will work for. There are certain types of patients who will actually follow through and do the things that I'm going to suggest. There are some people who have limitations because of their health or because of their age where they just won't be able to stimulate their own production anymore and they will have to have testosterone replacement. So testosterone, we know that testosterone is in both men and women and that we make testosterone, women make it in their ovaries and men make it in their testicles. So that's the first biology lesson about testosterone. So why don't we have testosterone throughout our lives? Well, the fact is, is that the way women are made, we are made to be fertile for a period of time during our lives. Between the time that we start having periods and the time we stop having periods between menarche and menopause, we are essentially fertile, or we should be fertile if we're healthy. And haven't had any trauma or problems with our our pelvis like endometriosis or fibroids. So in general, we're, we're fertile between teenage years and maybe 50. Now, what happens when we become menopausal and we're no longer fertile is that we stop making estradiol, young women's estrogen, we stop making testosterone, actually years before that, and we stop making progesterone. So those three hormones... Are, that's where they're made. That's their factory. So for women, we have a finite time when we can have good testosterone levels and when any of these lifestyle manipulations or supplements or, um, or actually foods can improve our testosterone level. After menopause, nothing we're going to do is going to stimulate those ovaries back to, to life because they're essentially dead. They're doing very little, just sitting there, and in general, they shrink down to the size of an almond. So that's women. Now for men, men have a much longer period of being fertile. In general, they're fertile their whole lives, to some extent, and they make testosterone from the time they're in utero until they are actually, they make it their whole lives. They don't stop making it. But the fact is, is that men in general stop making enough testosterone for them to be healthy and for them to feel good and to think well and have good muscle mass, to be strong, to be able to handle stress. They, they do that until it used to be 55. And in this last generation of men, it's, it's gone down to where men are starting to lose their, their active, healthy testosterone level and free testosterone level. Have, it goes down to about 40 something. So not all men, but the average is dropping. And there are many reasons for that. And we'll go over that. Um, actually, in the uh, HealthCast 606, which will be next week. Today, we're going to talk about the things that people who have active ovaries and have healthy tes- testicles can actually do to improve the production by those two organs. So um, one of them is that um, you can eat, (laughs) it's a diet kind of thing. You have to eat fresh foods. You have to eat um, raw vegetables. 
you ha it's like I'm saying this over and over again for almost every reason. To be healthy, you have to eat real food, not processed food, because processed food has so many additives in it to, to preserve it sometimes or to make it taste better or they have soy in them or they have other types of foods put in them that you don't even know unless you read the uh, contents of the food that you're eating. Um, many of those things, those, those additives, are going to decrease your ability to make testosterone and it's going to decrease your free testosterone. So we've, I've gone over this before, but let me recap. Total testosterone is, how, is the blood level of testosterone that is made in either the ovaries or testicles of uh, women and men. The free testosterone is the only part that your body sees. It's the only part that actually hooks up to your receptor sites and actually activates that cell to do whatever its job is that's stimulated by, by testosterone. So you have to have a high free testosterone, not just a high total testosterone. So um, eating fast foods and eating... Um, foods with additives, junk food, stuff from the center of the grocery store, um, that decreases your testosterone. All of those supplements that are put into those foods are going to decrease the ability of your ovaries and, and testicles to make testosterone. So that's one of the things that you can do. You can eat a well-balanced, varied diet. In other words, lots of different vegetables, different colors, lots of different fruits, different colors. Um, lots of different meats and fish and cheese, eggs and milk products. In general, milk products themselves, because they are from a cow, have some estrogen in them because that's where milk comes from. So those products should be eaten but minimally just because that can give you estrogen. Estrogen can actually inactivate your testosterone and lower your free testosterone. So that's something that you should watch. Uh, somebody who drinks a huge glass of milk every day who is a male may actually get man boobs from that because there might be enough estrogen in that high dose of milk to, uh, to a man. And it doesn't, it's not really different if you eat skim milk or partially skim milk. That's just the fat level. This is in any milk and any milk product. So that's something that you can watch, but you should eat some milk products. There's a lot of good things in them, cheeses, yogurts, that kind of thing, even butter. Now, um, high protein diets with fat, with um, lean meat is a benefit for testosterone. It helps testosterone. It helps give you the building blocks for your muscles. It helps build muscles and it helps actually increase your testosterone level. Cholesterol-containing foods, which everybody has been told not to eat, are now coming back into favor because it turns out that when we don't eat cholesterol, um, we aren't making, we aren't eating what we need to make testosterone. So if a young man eats just chicken, which doesn't have a lot of cholesterol, he doesn't eat red meat, he doesn't eat green leafy vegetables then he may not be able to have enough cholesterol to go to his testicles to make testosterone out of it. That's, I mean, cholesterol is the, the first product that, of what your diet is, or the first part of your diet that actually can become testosterone is cholesterol. So you do need cholesterol. Having it decreased greatly is going to make your cholesterol go down and then therefore your testosterone decrease. So it's not good to over um, decrease your cholesterol. So just remember that. I realized that uh, for years we were told to lower our cholesterol as much as possible, and that's what's been part of the problem with men getting such a low testosterone earlier and earlier in their lives. They're eating a low cholesterol diet. So um, actually the medications that lower cholesterol, the statins, actually cause problems too because your brain is made out of cholesterol. So not only does your brain need testosterone to help it grow new cells, but it also needs cholesterol to repair itself. So if your cholesterol is too low, you can get statin dementia, something that's what they've, they've called it. From having a statin and having too low a cholesterol, you can have dementia from that eventually. Or 
you're going to have very low testosterone. You're not going to be able to repair, repair your brain because you don't have enough cholesterol to make new brain cells. So those are two things that would be helpful if you would change lifestyle and, um, and eat lean meats and cholesterol-containing foods. Getting to your ideal weight is very important. And I can almost tell when somebody's uh, cholesterol, excuse me, when somebody's testosterone has dropped or free testosterone has dropped, because if I see him out and about, the guy will have a big, what we call a beer belly. Well, that's where men gain their fat. And there's a lot of internal fat and a lot of fat between the skin and the muscle. And that is something that is going to make estrogen. Fat in the belly area makes more estrogen. The estrogen then counteracts the testosterone and lowers the um, active part of testosterone or the free testosterone. So becoming fat and doing and the things that cause you to be fat, which is inactivity and uh, eating too much carbohydrate foods, that is eventually going to make your testosterone go down. What happens when your testosterone goes down? Well, you don't feel well. You're tired all the time. You're, you have a depression or an anxiety. And basically, you, don't ha you can't have an erection or you can't sustain an erection without enough testosterone, which is the biggest fear of most men. So for women, not having testosterone is about their mood. They lose their muscle mass. They gain belly fat. They feel tired. They're depressed. Um, Without testosterone, you just don't feel like doing anything. Your motivation is decreased, and you sit around the house, which just makes it worse because then you gain more fat, and then you make more of the bad estrogen called old lady estrogen, estrone, which counteracts more testosterone. So you can actually have such a bad lifestyle that you can actually counteract your testosterone, even if you're young and healthy or young and you were healthy, just by doing the wrong things. And just by becoming obese and uh, eating the wrong things, not exercising. Believe it or not, testosterone is produced during your sleep at night in a dark room. So if you don't sleep at night, if you have a, sh a shift schedule, that's dangerous for your testosterone level. Like if you sleep in the day and, and, and uh, work at night, that's very difficult. A lot of doctors have this issue and have low testosterone because of their night shifts, um, you need to get seven to eight hours of sleep in a row, and you need to sleep in a dark room, and you um, need to actually have good sleep. Now, testosterone gives you good sleep, and then, I mean, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg which came first. To get good sleep, you have to have testosterone, but to make testosterone, you have to have good sleep. Uh, most of the time, um, Working too hard and not sleep, putting enough emphasis on your sleep, partying too much, uh, that decreases your sleep, that decreases the time that you can make testosterone. So testosterone levels drop. So that's very important. Uh, the melatonin go, actually is, stim, is uh, secreted at night as well, and so is growth hormone. All the things that keep you lean are secreted at night while you're sleeping. So these are things that you should think about early on, even before you're close to 50, that you should make sure you're getting enough sleep. Um, moderate daily exercise is important. Everyone should really exercise every single day to keep testosterone pumping because exercise stimulates their brain, their pelvis, it gets blood flow rolling, and it stimulates your ability to make testosterone. It also decreases your fat content which decreases your estrogen. So it's a twofer. Um, supplements that stimulate production of testosterone include some amino acids and some anti-estrogens and some um, adrenal gland supplements. There are several supplements targeted to stimulate testosterone. I'm going to talk more about this uh, next week. Some of them are carnitine, uh, inositol, and choline, other building blocks of muscle and testosterone. Um, but We'll go over those in detail um, at our, in our next health cast. Most supplements that are on TV, however, if you think about it, they're herbs and, they're, and they may have some DHEA, they may have some ashwagandha in them. They are not going to work for old men. 
and they're not going to work for women past menopause. You can't stimulate a dead ovary and you can't stimulate testicles that are, that are resistant to their own stimulation from the pituitary. LH and FSH from your pituitary are actually the stimulants that are increased at night. They're the stimulants that then are sent to the testicles and the ovaries to stimulate your ovary and testicle to do the, make the things it's supposed to make. So um, these su some of the supplements on TV are well and good if you're under 40, but after that, they tend not to work, so you're just wasting your money. Um, when we look at other uh, supplements that increase your testosterone, we can look at fenugreek, 500 milligrams. That actually increases free testosterone. Um, dihydrotestosterone is, the, is one of the active forms of testosterone, or DHT. So there's some supplements that say, we're going to give you saw palmetto to decrease your DHT, which is not really stimulating your sex drive or st stimulating the active form of testosterone, your muscle mass. So if you, if you want muscles and if you want a better sex drive, I don't think it's wise to take saw palmetto. If you'd rather have thick hair and, um, and you would rather not have acne, then taking saw palmetto is a good idea. But it's not going to help your testosterone. Uh, DHEA is a precursor made by the adrenal that then makes dihydrotestosterone. And, D and it also makes testosterone. So taking DHEA does increase your testosterone level. And it is banned. I'm not sure it should be. I don't know that it increases it that much. But it is banned in competitive sports. But it's over the counter. Uh, ashwagandha, which it, I said uh, a little bit about earlier, decreases uh, cortisol. And I haven't talked much about the adrenal hormones, but cortisol, when you're stressed, cortisol makes cortisol um, binding globulin. And that binding globulin binds up testosterone as well as it binds up cortisol. So when you're stressed, then ashwagandha would help decrease the effect of that stress on your testosterone. Let's see, zinc picolate and arginine are two things that I recommend to men to increase their um, ejaculatory volume because that usually decreases as men get older. So those two things, zinc and, um, and um, arginine, are the two uh, supplements that can do this. And for women, it can help with vaginal wetness. It can also help with uh, wetness that comes with uh, sexual stimulation. So those are two Good things, they don't increase your testosterone really, they just increase your uh, sexual function. And lastly, uh, one of the supplements, uh, some, some supplements stimulate your, um, your um, nitrogen, and nitrogen dilates your blood vessels. And one of the supplements is called Neo40. There are other supplements that I've seen on television that stimulate the production of nitri nitric oxide, which dilates all the blood vessels in your pelvis, which is good for men for erections, good for women for stimulation, the beginning of uh, becoming aroused, but they don't do anything, that really doesn't do anything for your testosterone level. It really is just making uh, sexual response better. So, um, if you want to do the things that you need to do, you need to eat right, you need to be at your ideal weight, you need to get rid of junk food and fast food, you need to cook your own food, you need to have it uh, gra grass-fed meat, low-fat meat, take the meat off, the, take the fat off your meat when you're cooking it, um, lots of fish, lots of omega-3 um, uh, fatty acids, those are the things that are going to help you make your own testosterone. Basically, it's be healthy when you're young and be at your ideal weight, and then you will have the best testosterone you can possibly make yourself. After that point, you're just going to have to replace the testosterone, which is what I do every day. So this is something that after these things don't work, that's what you should turn to to get your testosterone replaced uh, or women after menopause or when their ovaries are removed. So I hope this helped you understand what is possible in terms of stimulating your own testosterone production.
And next week we'll talk about some of the things uh, that decrease your testosterone and your testosterone production and your free testosterone in your lifestyle. So please join us then. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.